have been a few really great videos from some high profile composers who have done these amazing walkthroughs of their templates, showing how they have a template ready to go when they're gonna start a project or when they get to into working on a film. And then most importantly, how things are, how the different groups of instruments are routed so that they can quickly lay off stems in one pass and then get those stems into their Pro Tools session that they're gonna deliver the, the music with. So, and typically these guys are working with templates that are en enormous, you know, hundreds, if not a thousand or more tracks that are already loaded with every orchestral library you can imagine and all their custom sounds. And they're splitting out stems into dozens and dozens of tracks, whether it's to prepare the music to go to the scoring stage where they're gonna record a real orchestra over it, or if it's gonna to go to a mixer who's gonna mix their score for them, or to um, to the dub stage where you know there's a music editor or whoever is driving the music machine and and can sort through all these and wants all these stems and the effects separate and whatnot. So I'm sure most of us have all kind of taken ideas from these videos and adapted adapted them to the way we work. For me, I work on a combination of both one-off branded content sort of things and then also longer form projects. So I, as I go into each project, I really like to do more diving and searching in my library for things specifically for that piece. So I don't have templates that are preloaded with every sound I have. I have a template that is basically a skeleton of all the empty tracks pre-routed, ready to go, and then I can dive in and, and start to sort through my sounds. And if it's gonna turn into, say, a documentary show or something that has multiple cues, like the one I'm gonna show you here in a second, then a template will kind of um, evolve as I work on it. And as I go from cue to cue, I'll keep working off of that same template that I load in. And it's easy to go back and forth and say you discover a sound later on that you really like and you want to introduce it earlier, you can go back and load it in. But the, the essence of it, though, is that you're, you are um, working with a pared down set of stems because maybe on a smaller production, if it's not a big Hollywood production, you might not have a single person driving the, the music um, machine at a mix. You might have one person mixing the whole show. And they don't want to sort through dozens of stems. They want the, the key ingredients, maybe six to a dozen ingredients split out that they can tap into easily. And, you know, the effects, like the effects on the strings can be with the effects on the strings. You don't have to separate those out. But the critical, the important part of doing that, of course, though, is you want your stems created in such a way so that if when you combine them all, it sounds identical to your full mix when you're listening to it, which seems obvious, but, you know, there are some definite tricks to doing that, doing a little mastering so that it all flows through accurately. So I'm going to walk you through a cue and show you my template and how I route things. This is in logic. Sometimes I'm jealous of all the routing possibilities within Cubase, but I think half the guys that I've seen have done this in Logic already. So it's definitely doable both ways. There's enough flexibility to get the track stacks and routing that you want. I'll show you that. Um, first, a couple commercials. Thank you to those of you who have checked out my album that I did on the Jupiter 8 synthesizer back here. There's an artist called Matthew Bourne, and he did a couple albums called Moog Memories and Moog Memories Plus, I believe. And the whole album was done on a memory Moog. And they're pretty pared down, just I think he's playing a lot of it live. And it was so cool to be able to hear that synth in such isolation and really be able to hear the character of it. There's another artist named Benj, I believe, who has a, he has a ton of albums, but a few of them he'll do each track on the album on a particular synth. And that's all you're hearing is from that one synth. And, 
And again, you to hear the qualities of each one in isolation, you, it's um, an appreciation you get from that, that that you can't necessarily get when those um, classic synthesizers are within a larger track. It had been an idea of mine that I wanted to do an EP like that someday, especially with my Jupiter 8, which coincidentally I was lucky enough to get several years ago before the prices went through the roof and I bought it from Alejandro Cortini just coincidentally. I didn't know him before that, but he was on some forum and said, hey, is anyone interested in this Jupiter 8? And so I wanted to do this EP on this guy while, while I have it and um, show it off. And as I got into it, uh, it went from an EP into a full album because I just thought of all these different ways to uh, produce these songs. So some of them, I'm just playing them live and they're more pared down in the style of the Matthew Bourne uh, album. And then others, I produce them in different ways. So one, I sample the Jupiter 8 and created like a little sample library and a wavetable. I use the uh, WaveEdit software that um, Synthesis Technology, that Paul from Synthesis Technology did to create a wavetable. <clears throat> and so for one track, I loaded all those sounds into the uh, Polyon Tracker and used that as the, the basis of the track. On another one, I loaded the same wavetable into the uh, E370, played some chords from there with it, and also into the Squid Sample. Uh, so I was kind of cheating a little bit, but, but all the sounds on the album are originated on the Jupiter. So anyways, it was, a, it was a really fun project to work within those relative limitations. And uh, I hope you get a chance to check it out. They have videos for each, each track as well. And then the, the, the other commercial is I've been dabbling in the Clubhouse app the last week or so. And there, there's a fair amount of chaff in there, a lot of Bitcoin craziness and NFS stuff that I'm still trying to figure out. And I'm not sure if it's a cult or a pyramid scheme, but trying to learn about it. But mainly, I've been learning a lot about you know meeting different film and TV people and also musicians. Um, Richard Devine hosts a room every Saturday evening with a general synth chat, which has been really cool. There weren't any clubs or rooms that were kind of focused on what I'd like to talk about. So I made a couple of clubs today and one of them is called Music and Circuits. I'll put the logo for that here. So music and Circuits is going to be focused on creating music from machines. So whether it's modular synths, hardware synths, electron devices, monomy devices, trackers, whatever. We're going to talk about that and, you know, less of an EDM focus and more um, that kind of alt indie electronic world that originates from there. And not only the techniques and details of that nature, but the thinking and, and uh, motivations behind things and what we're all trying to achieve and where we want to take it or if we're just collecting things or you know because that's valid as well and then the other group i created was focused on film scoring so this one's called scoring composer and that one is going to obviously focus on the the craft of film scoring so i just i hadn't seen one that was focused on that yet so i created it so Join either of those if you're interested, and I'll probably try to schedule uh, a room once a week and then maybe do some random rooms when, I, when, it, when the motivation strikes. That was a long intro. Let's get into the, um, into the session now, and I'll show you the... We'll talk about this template. This is my um, raw template that I have here that I open up when I'm going to start working. Nothing's loaded into it. All, all I have are the routings because I like to create the template that I like to create the, the, um, the sonic world kind of special for each one. It's just the way I work and it's, it suits me. And if I get into a project that has multiple cues or multiple series, then, you're, then you do develop a template with all the sounds as, as you're starting it, both ahead of starting it and as you get into the first couple of cues, you're curating your, your palette of sounds. 
and then you use then I'll use that as I go on as a starting point for each one. But generally, I start fresh, and we'll just go down the top real quickly. It's a, a dummy track for when I have CP some CPU nonsense happening. Um, this has no ins or outs, and it's kind of a way to flush out if you get um, a thread that's overloaded. Um, that's a logic glitch. Still happens with the 2019 Mac Pro. If you have a workaround, a, why that might be happening to me, please let me know. But I still have to use that from time to time. Not as much. These are track stacks, summing track stacks, with uh, raw, just blank instrument channels ready to go all routed through there, and then each stack has a reverb that's also gonna go with that stem. Um, for the woods, brass strings, choir, on down. And then I have audio tracks ready to go for recording audio. And um, and then I have a, a separate vocal one, just since I, you know, you're in a process vocals a little differently. And then if I were to record, uh, say, a real bass into one of these audio tracks, once I'm done recording it, I'll just drag that bass track into my bass stem. So that's a quick way to kind of record something and then put it where it needs to go. So that's when I'm working and writing. And if I'm gonna lay off a, uh, a version of it to go off for approval, bounce it to the video, that's all happening here. Once I get to the point where I wanna to start to create stems, then I have the stem group down below. I mute my mastering uh, chain that I was using before and usually we'll get rid of all that stuff and and honestly as I'm writing I don't I'm not really using much mastering anyways um, I'll talk about that more in a minute all these stem track audio tracks are ready to go and every group over here my woods brass strings blah 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 each of those is already pre bust to these tracks over here so all I have to do is put them into record I have to I have to enable them but I enable them, put them into record, play it down, and uh, and all your stems are recorded. And the uh, full mix is also set up, ready to go here. So in a nutshell, that's kind of an overview. So let's close this down and pull up an actual cue. This, this is actually gonna air on a PBS show called Fast Forward. As we saw before, I've still got my dummy track, and I've got the winds. Jim Galloretto on winds, bass clarinet. And I was also using, this is also with some of the sample stuff, so. Okay, so all the winds, and I think there's probably, sounds like there's some reverb on these actual channels. So if I if I was going to, yeah, like on this one, I can see I've got a, a, a reverb on there. So if I was in a situation where I wanted the effects to be separate from the woodwind stem, I would just bust it out to a separate channel that had just doing the reverb as a send. But in this case, you know, I'm doing a combination of both where I'm sending to a reverb where, and also somewhere the reverb is on the actual channel just because I know I'm going to combine them all. So that's all the wins. Same thing with the strings. Had a small group recorded. And in this situation, you know, it's just a single violin player. Viola and cello, uh, violin and cello. I was going for more of an intimate sound in the situation, so that was kind of on purpose. But I did want to broaden out just a little bit, so I did include the sample instruments with the strings as well. So it kind of softens it and fills it out a little. So. So you're getting a little bit of the pad of the samples, but the um, the real bite and, and emotion from the real strings. But they're all mixed together and going through, you know, I'm not separating the shorts and the 
longs into different ones. It's just strings for my for the purposes of this project. Bases using a Moog bass on this one. And then um, drums. Drums are kind of cool on this one because I had sampled a train. Somehow that was derived from a train. And this is from this bottle suction. I had a, a glass sitting on a wet counter and it started as, the, as it started to dry, the suction of the air started to create this little rhythm of the, of the water kind of this bubbling through the air. It was making that sound. And it was making that kind of loop, so I sampled that. Keys, shaking some keys. So that's kind of happening in this section. Just kind of showing you what's going on a little bit. Let's see. So the drums there are um, like this. And then later on, more of a traditional super dry. I think this is from Circle Drums, and this is a dry. I love those really dry 70s style kits. Um, so drums, reverse stuff that I will, I think I'm gonna do a separate video on my on a technique that I use. So I have some re reverse things coming in and out. So we'll get into to how I do that on, an, on another video. I think it's worth the exploration. Some synth sounds happening just kind of sweetening the acoustic stuff. Not a lot of hardware synths on this one. I think there looks like there's a Schwemann modular thing doing this arpeggio. Okay, so that's everything that's happening. So what do I do when I wanna to go to create the stems? Okay, so Stems are all down here, and I've already created them, but I can um, delete these out of the session. So I just go down to my stems, put them all in record. First thing is I do, I do go in and name each track. So this is cue number two. So I name each track MO2 just, just for recording the audio file. And I do this whenever I record any audio in a, in a multi-cue show like this because say I'm gonna record piano. I need to name it piano M2 or M2 piano because I'm I'm using multiple sessions, but they're all in the same folder looking at the same audio folder. So if I start just naming things piano, it can get kind of uh, hard to track, keep track of things. So I usually put the cue number and then describe the audio track. And then I do the same for the stems. So I just record it. So that's just all the um, so that's all the different groups being bussed to my stem. Okay, we'll back up one second. Something I picked up from Trevor Morris's video, which I liked a lot, was he applies a little bit of L2 limiting on each of the stem source stacks. If you turn off oversampling, put it in transparent mode, turn off true peak limiting, it's very low CPU. And using very little limiting on it, but it just a little bit does help and helps glue things together. So as I'm working, I will add that as I go. And then once I go to mix, I'll do any, if there's anything that's kind of sticking out or needs to be addressed in a, ma a mastering from a mastering point of view, I'll go in. So like on the drums, you know, I did some more compression. I used soothe on the high end to kind of soothe the high end and even a little multi-band. So I did some mastering on the drum stem and looks like on the strings as well, I did a little EQ and a little tape. So I'll do all that at the stem level. And so when that bus goes to get recorded, it's all, all the, the mastering is baked into the stem and my full mix, then 
I know is going to sound exactly like all the stems added together. Whereas if I did, it's kind of basic, but it's worth pointing out if you if you do some mastering only on your uh, master bus, that's not going to make it to your stems. Um, so it's a it's a way to make sure your stems equal your master. They should cancel each other out when you play them together. Okay, so that, that all gets recorded. The next step, once you have your, your stems all recorded here, is um, what I do then is I grab them all and I export them as an audio file. And the reason to do this is, well, a couple things. It's to kind of, it's an easy way to, to get a tidy, uh, quick version into your bounce folder. And it's also where I go in and add, and we'll clean up the name a little bit. So what I do is I go to where the stem starts and I copy the um, time code location, also stolen from some of the other videos. Um, so I've copied the time code location and then I uh, right click on one of these and I say export, export audio file. And then here we get some choices, okay? So I'm going to use the region name, which I've already got the queue number and the stem name for each of the, st the stem descriptions. And then I'm going to add custom. And custom, I'm going to put the time code location. So now I've got the, um, I've got my stem queue name, the, what, it, what it is, and the time code of where it starts. Now, the, the slickest way to do this is like what Neil Parfit does, where he has his logic session stems all going out to out of his interface, back into another interface, and going into Pro Tools. And he records it right into his Pro Tools session where he's comping all these things together. And I would maybe like to do that at some point, but for these more pared down, um, projects. This is this really works just fine, and once you get going, you can do it really quickly. So I've selected all the stems, export the audio, the regions, and I can add my time code location. And that is so when I drag these into Pro Tools, put it in spot mode, and I I have a record of what the time exact time code should be for where it's going to go. So I just hit export. I don't have to do it now, but hit export and then all the um so to recap i'm working things are going through my normal mix bus the stem folder is muted when i'm ready to make stems i mute the mix bus and the reason i don't just monitor through the stems is that it kind of when it's going through this additional bus it, it messes up the uh the way soloing works within logic so to solo things and, and different groups of things is not as uh, fluid when when you have it going through this through all these stem tracks. So I work. That's why I work through the master bus and then mute the master bus and go through the stems when I'm ready just to make my stems. So I think that's everything I wanted to highlight. I hope that was helpful for showing how you can. It's kind of a poor man's poor composers pared down stem template process and it worked really great for this last project I worked on it's on PBS on March 24th if you want to check it out it's called fast forward and it's a really great documentary okay and then um, just for shits and giggles we'll just we'll finish the video off I'll just play the track down just so you can hear it and I'll kind of flip through so this is gonna be with play it down and uh, yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the cue.